Hello, my name is Melinda Jacobs, owner of Quantum Therapeutics. It's such an honor for me to be a part of your healing journey. I want to take a little time and explain to you my background, my training, and give you a detailed description of cellular release therapy, what it is and how it works and what you can expect as a result. So my background is very, very diverse. I am a certified clinical hypnotherapist. I specialize in trauma counseling and have done a lot of training in addiction counseling as well. I've studied metaphysics and consciousness theory and a lot into spirituality. I'm an intuitive and an empath and I have years of training in energy healing modalities, Reiki, yoga, and meditation, and many more. With this extensive and diverse training, I'm able to bring a very unique perspective to the table to assist you along your journey. Cellular release therapy is probably one of my favorite tools to work with clients because it's so highly efficient and highly effective. Based on the work of Dr. Ed Martin, who created cell command therapy, Ann Drucker took that work and expanded it to create cellular release therapy. It's a highly efficient, highly effective way of reducing and eliminating trauma and the reactivity from experiences from the past, whether you remember them or not. The beauty of cellular release therapy is that you don't have to relive the event in order to clear the residual trauma. It's not designed like other past life regression type therapies for there to be memory recall of the conscious mind. The conscious mind can observe the process as much as it wants, but ultimately it gets very bored and it's actually invited to just drift away. The way it works is I walk you into a mildly relaxed state through a guided visualization. Your conscious mind is present and observing and the first time that I work with a client I always invite the conscious mind to observe the process because it's going to anyways. I'll be asking your subconscious mind questions. They are answered with yes no responses that look like this. First fingers yes, little fingers no, yes and no. Most people ask me, well, Melinda, how do I know this is actually my subconscious mind answering? How do I know that that's not actually the conscious thinking mind interrupting? And it's a great question. The way you know is really very, quite simply, whichever finger's lighter, easier to move, that's the finger you move. The conscious mind really only has about 10% access to all life experiences. And the subconscious mind has access to the totality of all experiences, everything you've ever heard, seen, felt, thought, feared, believed, is all within the access of the subconscious mind. So if you just, if you just notice which finger's lighter, easier to move, you're good to go. Once I walk you into that mild, relaxed state and I designate that I'm going to speak to the subconscious mind, I'll begin asking the subconscious questions. Has there been an experience of X, Y, and Z? And the subconscious will respond. And if it says yes, I'll begin asking, has there been more than one such experience, more than 10, more than 100, more than 1,000, more than a million? And every time the subconscious will be responding. Eventually, I'll ask the subconscious, can you release and clear every one of these experiences? And what I'm asking the subconscious to release and clear is not the memory itself. You'll still have the memory, but what we're releasing and clearing is the reactivity around the memory. All the shock and trauma, all the physical pain and sensations, and all the feelings that were a part of that experience or that series of experiences. The subconscious will make a calculated, precise decision about you, your functionality, and your stability. Will you be more functional, more stable, or less? This is not about creating more discombobulation. We're not decompensating you in any way. We're trusting the part of you that knows you best and it knows exactly what is creating a pillar of stability within your psyche 
It also knows what is just extraneous fodder bogging down the system, creating internal conflict and making things run more slowly and inefficiently. If the subconscious mind says no, no, I cannot release and clear every one of these, it's a great answer. And that's really why I love this process because I don't know what's keeping you functional and stable. And consciously, 10%, either do you. So when the subconscious says no, I have some secondary questions. I'll ask about those experiences. Maybe they're being used for protection. Maybe they're providing something you need or maybe something needs to be cleared first, more in a systematic kind of way. Ultimately, no means no. And that's what I love about this process. There are so many built-in safeties for you. That very rarely happens. The ultimate no, don't touch that. Most of the time, the subconscious is highly invested and interested in releasing and clearing all that residual charge because it's creating discomfort for you. It's bogging the system down. It's running inefficiently. So most of the time, the subconscious says, yes, I can. At which time I give a directive. I direct you now, the subconscious mind, to completely release and clear every one of these experiences. And there's more to the directive, but that's what it sounds like. I'm sending the subconscious mind into doing something. At the end of the directive, I ask the subconscious, when you've released and cleared them all, let me know. You and I were just waiting for that yes finger to feel light enough to move again. It could be instantaneous. It's amazing how much material can be released and cleared in just one session. Thousands, if not millions of experiences all at once. So just to summarize the process, guided visualization. I'll designate that I'm going to speak to the subconscious mind. I'll establish the yes, no responses. I'll offer a few more suggestions for you to deepen into a more relaxed state. You'll either take them or you won't. That's fine. Ultimately, I'll ask the subconscious mind, are you ready to respond? And at the point we get, receive a yes, then we move into clearing. So that's the process of cellular release. I'd like to take a moment and just talk about what you might experience as a result. I have heard hundreds, if not thousands of experiences, and they're all similar in some ways and yet unique to every individual. So I invite you to just notice what feels different. For some people, they just feel immediately lighter, more calm, less reactive, more responsive. Those are probably the most common types of, re of reactions that people have. Other times, this can act like a very physical detox and you can feel the body making adjustments. If that were to occur, you just need to take very good care of yourself. Stay hydrated. Rest if your body feels a little tired afterwards, just like you would on any other given day. Whatever your body's requiring or demanding of you in that moment, take good care of you. Other ways to take care of yourself after doing clearing work is journaling, maybe a hot bath and Epsom salts, whatever just feels nurturing to you. The results may be immediate and they may be gradual over time. And as you and I work together, sometimes you'll just be absolutely stunned and amazed and oh my gosh, Melinda, I can't believe what's changed. And other times, and this actually happens quite often, someone will be talking about, you know, I'm just not mo noticing very much. And I'll say, well, what about that? And what about that? And what about that? And they're like, oh yeah, that's gone now. And I'm like, oh. And sometimes things will just slip away and they'll disappear and you won't even realize that they've gone. So I look forward to working with you. I'm so excited for the opportunity and I absolutely know that everything you need is within you. And until you can know that for yourself, I will know your truth and I will walk every step of the journey that you need. Thank you so much and I look forward to seeing you soon.